All right, guys, what's up? Welcome back. You're watching the Acer Team Story Cup. We got Mouse Sports versus Western Wolves, and it's getting a little bit interesting. Mouse Sports started up 3-0, Lucifron winning three in a row against three very good Protoss players. Then Vortex came in. Uh, well, then Lucifron lost. Then Vortex came in and won. And then Vortex lost to check. So right now we stand at Western Wolves is down two to four. This is match point. A Protoss versus Zerg on Akalon Waste in the bottom right hand location. Representing Team Mouse Sports, I present your red Protoss player, Mana. His opponent in the top left hand location, your blue Zerg player. Representing Team Western Wolves, he is check. I want to thank you guys for tuning in and supporting StarCraft 2. You guys are so awesome. Captain Flash, Johnny Wrath, SE2, DJ Wu, Amishon 13, Brown Man EU, Inject X, Doug HD, Mabata. Hopefully you guys are having a good day. Baby Knight, I saw you in the chat. I saw you in the chat, Baby Knight. Give me your thoughts maybe in the chat on this game. <laughs> I want I want to co-cast with you, Baby Knight. One of these days, we need to make it happen. I think we work well together. Because you're, like, really good at StarCraft. You're kind of good. One of the top EU players in the world watching the MLG SE2 stream. Making me feel special. All right, so again, the situation, guys. Mouse, it's match point. If Mana can win this, he takes the victory for Team Mouse Sports, which would be fantastic. Uh, this is the regular season. Mouse Sports right now, they're sitting at number six. They would love to have better standings moving forward. Western Wolves, they're at number one. So a loss here wouldn't be catastrophic, but a victory would, you, you know, secure themselves at the top even more, which, of course, they would not be unhappy with. So Czech is certainly capable of making stuff happen, but Czech, he's got to win quite a bit. He's got to win a bit. He can't he can't let mana win. He basically has to win three more. He's got to win three more. Can he make it happen? We're going to find out. So starting things off, full finishing up here for Czech, getting a hatchery at his natural and third immediately as mana identifies. Mana actually opening up with a forge. Getting a cannon out, so playing a very economic, very safe play. PvZ has been very interesting lately. How many of you guys saw Naniwa versus Revival? How many of you guys saw that? That was a very interesting matchup. Naniwa playing like a beast. 3 0 Revival, spoiler alert. So Naniwa's going to be playing a BlizzCon because of that victory. First match going to be against Sulky. That's going to be sick. That starts on Friday. Don't miss it. So the big controversy behind that, or the big story mainly, was just Naniwa's control was great, but there were also two games he lost his third base, and the Zerg invested a little bit too much into the attack or didn't transition necessarily properly, and Naniwa was able to take advantage, counterattack, and win. And like, there's some theory out there. I think Rhett was the first one to make it. If the Protoss takes a third base, they lose, which is interesting to think about. It's all about the two base play. Let's see what happens here. Two gases mining in the main base here for Manny. He's got the forge. Let's see. Tech is going to come out soon. This sling is, is pretty annoying. He wants to get rid of that before adding on any tech. I mean, he has 230 gas, so the tech should come down fairly soon. But he's probably going to wait for the stalker to finish, take out that zergling, and then and then throw down like a stargate or something. Stargate is, is typically the go-to for Protoss players nowadays. Got a gas going down at the natural expansion too, so it's not like he's investing into a crazy two gas play. And Stargate should go down fairly soon now. Let's see if he does it. Right here. Right here. Right here. Any tech at all. Wait for it. Wait for it. He's got two to gas. Okay, plus one. Twilight Council? Is that what he's doing? Oh, come on. Where's your tech? Come on, man. Okay. Come on, man. Uh, mana. Get it? Funny? That was terrible. Sorry. Terrible, terrible. Okay, layer here from check. Two gas at the natural expansion. Very standard play here from the Zerg. Very standard play indeed. Mana, what are you up to, man? Keep an eye on that. Zealot Stalker trying to be pesky across the map. Mothership, come, Mothership Core coming forward, trying to save that Stalker's life. Will he be the saving grace? Will he be the hero that that Stalker deserves but doesn't necessarily need? For now, he will be. The Ling's going to keep going across the map here. So is he just gonna for gonna go for like a big sentry push? He's adding on four gateways. And he's sneaking him in there. He's going for a big two base push. He's doing what Nanny Hall is doing, kind of. 
just a bunch of gateway units, a bunch of sentries, and just pushing with a bazillion gateway units. You get like nine, ten sentries. Positioning is very important. Good control is very important. If someone has good control, it's mana. Mana is excellent control. Now, check needs to identify this. A sentry made the wings. Not going to be able to sneak on by. So what has Check seen? He's still, kinda, he's still got an Overlord in there. He's seen the two gases. So he might be thinking his opponent is attacking. Hydrogen already halfway done. Seven gates on the way for mana. He's going to have eight gateways in total. He has a pylon right outside his opponent's creep. And Check needs to see this. That's actually very important. And I think he's faking a third. This is definitely a fake. Wow. Really cool play here from mana. Now, does Check have any idea? Does Check have any idea whatsoever? He's making a lot of links, but he just mixed in a drone. He's working on a, a plus one upgrade. Is his economy in a state where he can fend this off? There's three overlords in, produ in production. He's not supply block by any means. He's trying to decide it. Right now, he's trying to decide should he make drones or should he make units. Okay, he's making four hydras. He still has no idea. Guess what? Guess what's happening over here? Check has zero clue. And he's going to look at the third, and now he's going to feel like he's going to feel scared. He sees no third. He's like, oh god, I was trapped. I was tricked. Now he's like, okay, where's my opponent's army? It has to be here somewhere. He's like, where is it? Uh-oh. There it is. Boom. Or is it? No. Where's his army? He has no idea. Okay, now he knows. He sees the sentries. Pylon taken down, but Mana is already in a phenomenal position. Closing the back door. Look at this play here. His front door is locked down. He's got a cannon there to, to keep that safe. And now we got a bunch of Hydras here, but is that going to be enough? Mana's force field control has to be perfect. There's one force field. Time war going down. Ling trying to get some damage done. Hydra's trying to get damage done as well, but the Protoss is going to back up going to kite away, but does Check have enough to take this down? More and more units going to be added on here for mana. Just trying to have enough units to overpower Check, but that's a lot of Hydras. Nine more Hydras in production and not a lot of force fields remaining. This is exactly what Naniwa was doing against Revival, but does mana have enough? A lot of drones being pulled here. Income tab, 68 Harvesters on the map for Check. If he can hold this off, he's going to win this game. More and more units being morphed in being warped in here from mana, trying to engage these drones, trying to engage these lings. A lot more Hydras coming out, but does mana have enough? Mixing in more Zealots, more Sentries, but that's a lot of Hydras. He's going to have to try to pick them apart, but 22 more lings in production as well as four Hydras. I think Check might be in a good position. Great force fields there from mana. Got to keep those Sentries alive, but no, they're going to fall. Every Sentry has fallen here for mana. I don't know if it's going to work. 46.25 to 37.50. This is going to get shut down. He's actually transitioning. Check did a great job dealing with this. Remember, he didn't see this for a very long time. I think a lot of that was he was saving a lot of his resources because he wasn't necessarily sure what to build. He could have built a round of drones there and he would have lost the game. But he wanted to confirm that his opponent didn't take a third base so he could feel safe to, uh, to drone up. So he was checking on the third base. If he saw the third, he would have droned, probably. And if he... Uh, but he, he saved he saved it, and he's like, okay, my opponent's attacked me, so I'll make a bunch of Hydras and Lings, and then it paid off. Great. Great defense there from Check. Mana trying to go for the Naniwa style. But look at this Check. Up 140 to 73 in supply. Again, a must-win situation for Check if he wants Western Wolves to stay in it. But Check is pretty darn good at StarCraft, too. All right, Hydras, marching forward, crushing into the natural expansion of mana. He doesn't have a lot. Like, he doesn't have Colossi. This might be the end for him. Um, generally, against Hydras, you're either going to want a bazillion gateway units or a Colossus or, like, High Templar. Like, Hydras are very powerful once they get this many. And there's the GG. Wow, nice victory there from Check. Very fancy, very fancy play. So, Check, he's going he's gonna to bring the series even closer. So, now it's 4-3. to three in favor of Mouse. So Check able to win two in a row there, bringing it back. If he can win two more, he's going to get the victory for Western Wolves, but still a decent way to go, guys. We're going to have Mouse choosing a new player to send in to face off against Check. We're going to have plenty more StarCraft 2 coming your way. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Mouse versus Western Wolves, the Acer Team Story Cup. We'll be right back.